Up until this point, you're familiar with determining the gradient of a line. We're also able to determine the average gradient of a curve. What we need to do with calculus is we determine the gradient at a point of a curve. To determine the gradient, we need to get our derivative or determine our derivative. In order to determine our derivative of our function, we need to use our differentiation rules. That's what I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm going to be covering the power rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. The chain rule is in a different video, and so is differentiation using first principles. Let's get straight in. If we look at our power rule, we have our function being x to the power of a. Now, in order to de derive using the power rule, we take our exponents, we multiply it with the coefficients of the x, and then we reduce that exponent by 1. So exponent times the coefficient of the x reduce the exponent by 1. We have three extra rules that we need to know with the power rule, and that is the first one that I'm going to talk about is when we are differentiating and we have a coefficient and an x, the derivative will just be the coefficients. If we're differentiating a function with just an x, the derivative will be 1. And if we are doing the differentiation with a constant, the answer or the derivative will just be 0. All right, if we look at our first example, we have f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. So my notation, f prime of x, or the derivative of x, is equal to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my exponent. So it's the exponent times the coefficient. Now the coefficient of x in this case is a 1, so it will be 3 times 1, which is 3 x and then I'm going to take that exponent of 3 and I'm going to decrease it by 1 so that will give me an exponent of 2. For the next one I have the exponent of 2 but I have a coefficient of 2. So I first start by multiplying the coefficient and the exponent together so 2 times 2 is 4 x. The power of 2 I'm going to decrease by 1 so that's going to give me an exponent of 1. Now only in this first example I'm going to write out all the exponents including the exponent of 1. The next one, I have an exponent of 1, so that means that I'm going to multiply that 1 with the negative 3. So I have negative 3x, and then I'm going to decrease the exponent of 1 by 1. And if I decrease 1 by 1, I get to the power of 0, which is why it's just going to be negative 3. At the end, I have a constant of positive 4. And we know that the derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm just going to leave it out. But in this first instance, this first example, I'm going to just write it in so that you can see where it's coming from. All right, so if I just clean this up, I would have the derivative of x being equal to 3x squared plus 4x. I don't need to write the exponent of 1 minus 3 because it would be 3 times x to the 0 is 1 negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 0 I can leave out. If I look at my next example, I have h of x equal to 2x cubed minus 8x minus 10, x to the power of negative 1. So the derivative will be h prime of x is equal to. So I take the exponents of 3 and I multiply it with the coefficients of 2. So I get 2 times 3, which is 6. x to the power of, I reduce the 3 by 1, and I get 2. Then I have minus 8x, so minus 8 times 1 is minus 8. x to the power of 1 reduces to 0, x to the power of 0 is 1, so that means that it just becomes minus 8. Remember, if we have a coefficient and the x, so to the power of 1, then the derivative will just be the coefficient. Now I have negative 10x to the power of negative 1. So that negative 1 is going to multiply with the negative 10 to give me a positive 10. Then just be careful because if you have an exponent of negative 1 and you're reducing it further by 1, it's not going to become 0. It's going to become negative 2. So we have 6x squared minus 8 plus 10x to the negative 2. There is another way we could write this by making our exponent positive. So we could have the derivative equal to 6x squared minus 8 plus, the 10 stays at the top, 
over x squared. If we look at our next example, we're getting the derivative. So I'm just changing up my notation each time. So we have the derivative of y equal to x to the 4. The coefficient of the x at the moment is 1, so it's going to be 1 times 4, which is 4x, but I reduced the exponent of 4 by 1 to give me 3. Plus 3x cubed, so the positive 3 is going to multiply with the exponent of 3, which is going to give me 9. x to the power of 3 reduced by 1 gives me x squared. Then I have negative a half x squared, so the negative a half is going to multiply with the exponent of 2, and negative a half times 2 is negative 1, so I don't need to obviously write the uh, coefficients of 1, I can just leave it as negative. x to the power of 2 minus 1, or 2 reduced by 1, gives me 1, so I don't need to write it. Plus 2x, we know that if I have plus 2x, the exponent of the x is 1, so that's just going to give me a derivative of plus 2. Minus 27, the derivative of a constant is 0. And there's my answer. Last example of the power rule. Now, if we look at this example, we have thirds and we have fractions. So we just want to get rid of the thirds, get rid of the fractions. Get rid of the thirds by making it a rational exponent. Get rid of the fraction by making it a negative exponent. Be careful with your notation because I'm keeping it as y, because y equals the cube root of x squared. So I'm going to keep it as y equals because I'm not changing it to the derivative yet. I'm just changing the form of the function. So the cube root of x squared becomes x to the power of 2 over 3 plus 1 over x can also be written as x to the negative 1 plus 2x. And now I can get the derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my notation. Still meaning the derivative. So the derivative is equal to x to the 2 thirds. So the 2 thirds will multiply with the coefficient of 1, which gives me 2 over 3x to the power of, and I'm going to reduce that exponent by 1. So 2 over 3 minus 1 is negative a third. Then the positive x to the negative 1, the exponent multiplies with the coefficient. So positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. x to the power of negative 1 reduced by 1 is negative 2. And I have a coefficient and an x. So plus 2x, the derivative is just 2. Remember, how do I remember that? The exponent is a 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Reduce the exponent by 1, it will become a 0. That is my answer, and I would be able to leave it like that. However, if I wanted to change my negative exponents to positive exponents, I'd be able to write it as follows. So now we have the product rule, and the product rule is when we have the product multiplication of two functions. So we have two functions being multiplied together. When we have the product rule, basically all we're doing is we're taking the second function, multiplying it by the derivative of the first function, adding that to the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. It sounds way more complicated than what it is. If we look at our first example, we have 2x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 3x minus 4. So basically, I just have a quick and easy way to remember the product rule and the quotient rule um, using the same letters in the same order so that it's kind of easy to remember. We are just going to remember that it's b times a plus a times b. But it's not b times a, they are derivatives. So it's the derivative, the derivative. So it's b times the derivative of a plus a times the derivative of b. And you'll see that when we get to quotient, I do it with the exact same letters in the exact same order, except instead of a plus, we put a minus. All right, so now if we look at it like that, we could think of this is a and this is b. The derivative will equal b as it is, x squared minus 3x minus 4 multiplied with the derivative of a. Now, if we look at 2x plus 1, we have a coefficient in x, which means that the derivative will just be a 2. The plus 1, the derivative of a constant, is 0. And we are going to add that to a as it is, 2x plus 1, 
multiplied by the derivative of b, x squared becomes 2x, minus 3x becomes negative 3, negative 4 becomes 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. Now all we're going to do is we are going to FOIL that out, we are going to multiply it out so that we can find the derivative nice and neatly. If I look at my next example, I have the product of two functions again. So I'm just going to quickly remember b times a plus a times b, the product rule, but it's not a and b, it's the derivative the second time. So it's b times the derivative of a plus a times the derivative of b. The derivative of h will equal b as it is, x squared minus 4, multiplied by the derivative of 3x minus 1. The derivative of 3x is 3, the derivative of minus 1 is 0. Plus a as it is, 3x minus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the second term, or the derivative of b. The derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of negative 4 is 0. Now I'm going to multiply them out. The derivative is equal to 9x squared minus 2x minus 12. If we look at the quotient rule, it's two functions being divided by each other. So how are we going to work it? We are going to take the denominator, multiply it with the derivative of the numerator, subtract it from the numerator multiplied by the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. It's going to be okay. If we look at this next example, we have two functions being divided by each other. So I'm going to use the same letters, the B and the A, that we used for the product rule. So remember, the product rule was B times A prime plus A times B prime. So we're going to use the same order of letters. We're going to do B times A prime, A times B prime. Except instead of a plus, we're going to do a minus. And then there's just one extra thing that we're going to add at the bottom, which is b squared. And there's the quotient rule summed up. So I can think of this as a and think of that as b. So looking at the derivative, we would be able to say that the derivative of f will be equal to b times a derived. So b as is, x plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the top. So x cubed becomes 3x squared, minus 1 becomes 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0, plus 2x. Then I'm going to minus a as it is. So x cubed minus 1 plus x squared, multiplied with the derivative of b. And the derivative of b, x plus 1, x becomes 1, and 1 becomes 0. Then I'm going to put that all over the b, which is x plus 1, but I'm going to square it. All right, now I'm just going to clean this up, multiply it out, and get to my next step. So once I've foiled out the first two brackets and multiplied out the second bracket, then this is what I'm left with. I therefore have the derivative of f being equal to, when I clean up the numerator, I get 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, all divided by x plus 1 all squared.
If I look at this last example of the quotient rule, all right, so the shortcut, remember, b times a prime minus a times b prime, all divided by b squared. So if we're looking for the derivative, we're going to take b as it is, which is 3x minus 2, and we're going to multiply it with the derivative of a. x squared becomes 2x. 1 becomes 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0. Minus a as it is, x squared plus 1, multiplied with the derivative of b. The derivative of 3x is 3. Remember, if you have a coefficient and an x, the derivative will just be the coefficient. The derivative of negative 2 is 0. That is all over b squared. So b is 3x minus 2, and that is squared. Be sure to watch the videos on first principles and the chain rule. I hope that this video helped. Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be.